Hi, I'm Steve Selig, founder of Fit Test, and this is the third part of a small series on atrial fibrillation and exercise. And in part three of this video, I'm just going to uh, cover a case study. So first of all, um, a, a case of new atrial fibrillation in a 61 year old female who arrived at my clinic for her regular exercise session. Uh, when she arrived, uh, she was slightly clammy and uh, lightheaded and quite anxious. And we uh, noticed uh, straight away that her heart rate was much higher than her normal resting heart rate at 125 beats per minute and she had a weak, irregular pulse. Her medications uh, were nil at this stage, and because we have uh, a simple recording device, single channel ECG device, this one's at a live core, where the, you pay for the hardware, but the app is free. This enabled us to record very simply a single channel ECG, which clearly showed the ventricular arrhythmia, in other words, the the rhythm disturbance in the main pumping chambers, the ventricles, as indicated by these changes in intervals, the irregularity of the intervals. This one's a different pulse here. This is an ectopic pulse, but the rest of them are all uh, very irregular. Now, if you didn't have this technology, you can still easily uh, record this sort of arrhythmia or, or detect it by just using a radial pulse. Um, although I note that the, uh, the radial pulse was weak, so you could go to a stethoscope um, on the heart itself or using a blood pressure method that I've, I've talked about in another video in this series. So you can, you can refer to that other video. So just uh, what I gave advice in um, uh, part uh, one or two of this video series was that um, uh, with new atrial fibrillation, such as this example here, uh, I recommend that you do not exercise them on this day because you can get into real uh, difficulties with very high heart rates. So do not exercise. And I would say if this is a new finding, not, on, not known to the patient or the primary care medical practitioner, this does recur an urgent uh, referral because we don't know how long this irregularity has been, and there is the risk of um, intra-atrial thrombus, um, blood clot forming in the, in the atria that can then uh, cause a stroke. Uh, and there are also the problems with very high heart rates. So I would say urgent referral, uh, either to your emergency um, medical uh, phone number for wherever you live in Australia, it's triple zero, uh, but also uh, contact uh, to the primary care medical practitioner usually the general practitioner, the GP. And if you can record, that's all the better because then you have a record of what has actually happened. But uh, the main thing is uh, do not exercise them. Now, a second case here where atrial fibrillation was, had been diagnosed in a 76 year old female, and that uh, patient was being treated with the first line drugs of rivaroxaban or Xarelto, which is an oral anticoagulant uh, that I've talked about in uh, part one of this series on atrial fibrillation. I also talked about uh, beta blockade, uh, sotalol, uh, as a first line uh, beta blocker in this condition. And the idea is to, um, that sotalol will reduce the amount of electricity going through into the bottom chambers, the ventricles, which should then slow heart rate. River Roxaban, uh, mainly indicated for preventing uh, clots forming and strokes. So in this particular example, I won't go through the ECG here. Uh, clearly you can see that resting uh, heart rate was reasonably high at 93, a bit too high. And even in post-exercise, it stayed uh, just under 100 beats. Um, the peak exercise heart rate though should have been a lot lower. In this case, it was 155, which was actually right on 100% of the age predicted heart rate peak. And you can see here, the jagged heart rate response, which is completely typical. This is heart rate against time here. This is about 15 minutes, 20 minutes along here. About a 10 minute exercise test. These are the heart rates on the vertical axis. Uh, normally we'd see a nice smooth increase in heart rate through here and a smooth decrease in heart rate in recovery. We don't see that. That's because of the irregularity of the heart rates right through exercise. 
And you can see that also here, that the heart rates don't follow a perfectly linear line compared to heart rates for clients that don't have atrial fibrillation. So um, as a result of this, we need to check a few things with this client. And as it turned out, uh, the client wasn't taking the beta blocker because she was experiencing some uh, lightheadedness when she was taking it and hadn't reported this to her doctor. So this was an opportunity um, for us to contact the GP, in this case via letter, but if it was more urgent via phone call, uh, to report to the GP that we thought um, the rates were a bit too high. And this then might be a learning experience for the, for the patient uh, to um, take the medications as prescribed. The Xarelto here wasn't, wasn't an issue. She was taking the Xarelto, but had not been taken for um, a week or two, the beta blocker. So this is an example of how you can work with uh, atrial fibrillation clients to achieve uh, good results, a good outcome here, being um, a back referral back to the general practitioner. But, but even so, we can use these heart rates in fit test to get an estimate of uh, fitness, even in this circumstance here, which is not quite ideal. And when she comes back, we will almost certainly find the heart rates to be lower. Um, and we can then uh, just retest her very simply using fit tests. So this is a, a very um, easy example of how people with atrial fibrillation uh, can work with you and you can use the fit test app to uh, measure their fitness at both this point where there was not perfect medication compliance and then if she comes back uh, when she is taking her medications. So that's really all I wanted to say to you about atrial fibrillation uh, in terms of a couple of case studies. If you have any questions, you can contact me uh, by emailing info at myfittest.com.au. So have a great day and I'll speak to you later. Bye. Bye for now.